Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite, and today we're going to be doing our Node Red Masterclass number four. We're going to be taking an IKEA light, although it could be any. We're going to be taking some IKEA remotes, although it could be any as well. And we're going to be controlling dim up, dim down, and creating some really cool functions. Let's go! So if you're new to Node Red, this is probably not quite the place to start because I'm going to go through it at a fairly quick pace. You're going to want to jump back to masterclass number one, number two, to look at how the nodes work, how they interoperate, what a message payload is, how flow variables work, and all that good stuff. If you're liking the sort of topics I'm covering, make sure you subscribe so you keep up to date with all of my next videos that are coming out. And today we are going to be looking at some IKEA remotes. We've got a multi one here. We've got a rotary dial here. We've got a dimmer. Um, we've got an IKEA Zigbee light bulb. But what I've proven in some previous videos, again, I'll put a link at the top, is that the IKEA bulbs and remotes are just Zigbee devices. So we are using Zigbee to MQTT to bring those inner sensors into our home assistant. And check out part two to use the multifunction remote with hold to dim up and dim down. So this flow here that you can see on the screen is the last version of the flow that I was doing in my set of IKEA videos, which took this dimmer here and this light bulb here and it turns the light off and it turns the light on. If you press and hold, it turns the plug top on and press and hold off and it turns the plug top off. Now that is mildly useful, um, but actually we can do a lot more with this. We can do um, dimming of this light. Now, before we do that one, I'm gonna get rid of this and we're going to, first of all, we're gonna look at this rotary dial. So first of all, we're gonna remind ourselves what the rotary dial can do. So I'm gonna drag on an event state I'm going to point this to my rotary dial, which is called rotary1 action. I'm going to leave the state to be blank, so if the state is anything. And I'm going to drag on a debug node, wire the two together, and deploy. So we're going to be looking for what our actions are. So I've got a single click as play pause, a double click as skip forward, a triple click as skip backwards, rotate right, and rotate stop, rotate left, and rotate stop. So that's really important because I'm going to rename this to be rotary action. I'm going to get rid of my payload a minute, and I'm going to look for a switch node, drag that in line, and all of these things here we can do something on. So most importantly, I'm going to put on play, pause. <clears throat> you can copy them in, skip forward. So I'm going to hit another add here and skip backwards, add. I'm going to put rotate right in there as well and rotate left. And I'm going to put rotate stop in there as well. Cool. So they're all of our actions that we can do from our rotary dial. So if, when the rotary action is triggered, it's going to pass it onto the switch, and this is going to then decide, based on which action it's received, which route to go down. So I'm going to just leave that. Actually, I'm just going to leave that, and it's going to call it switch. So now, if I press deploy, so we can see that this top point here is if it's play pause, if I clear those debugs, like if I click once, I should get a login here. If I double click, I shouldn't get anything because it's going to go out of this one here. So that's quite cool. So we can now put in a call service and wire that up. Now I'm going to say call this light on. Domain is light. Service is on. And my entity ID is called bedroom light one. Done. Deploy. So now, if I clear that, if I click once, we should see that this light turns on. There we go. 
Now if I double click, it doesn't do anything at the moment. Now next we can make a decision. We can run in a current state node. I'm going to drop that in there. And I'm going to say entity ID is my, again, bedroom light. Bedroom one light. If it's on, now if it's on, so I'm going to just rename that. So if it's on at the moment, so if state is true, so if that's on, we don't want to turn it on, we want to turn it off. So therefore, if it's not true, it's off, we want to turn it on. I'm going to copy that, paste it up there, and make this off. And make that off. Done. So now I can click once to turn off, and once to turn on. And it will check the state and do the opposite. So that's quite cool. But what I love about this rotary dial is that it's rotary and there's, at the minute we're not using that we're just using it as a button so we could be using anything so we want to use the brightness now we're not passing brightness in through here so if you remember looking at that debug message it simply passed in the action so next we want to use that rotary function so I'm going to take this rotary action here and I'm going to copy a light on and I'm going to wire those two together just just to test but at the moment if you look within here we're not doing anything to set the brightness of the light. So we want to use the rotary function. So first of all, how do we send a light a brightness value? So if I copy this light on and put it here, you can see that at the moment there's no concept of brightness. But if we look down here, it does tell us. So we can see there's two ways of using brightness. Now this brightness here is a number between 0 and 255. Brightness underscore PCT is between 0 and 100. So this is a percentage of the full brightness. Now we know that our brightness comes in as a binary number, i.e. it's between 0 and 255. So we're going to use this one here, brightness. So within our light on, within this data part, I'm going to click on the three little dots, and I'm going to paste this in here. Now if I press format JSON, it should lay it out nicely for me. So we've got the entity ID and the brightness. Now bear in mind we've got a comma at the end of this one because it's not the last thing and then there's no comma behind bright after brightness because it is the last thing. So I've got brightness of 5 at the moment, so that's quite dim. I'm going to copy that and paste it here and I'm going to make this brightness of 100. I'm going to put in an inject node to each one of those and deploy just so we can test that we can control the brightness of this light. So if I press this one, it should set it to 5. If I press this one, you should see that the brightness has changed. It's gone up to 100. Down and up. Great. So how do we use this rotary brightness? So we know that this action doesn't send brightness in, but we know that if we change this to rotary one underscore brightness we know that it does so let's just check that with a debug node and deploy and if I turn this dial we should see that the brightness comes out 44 50 90 and if we go all the way up it's gone up to 254 we know which brightness setting we need to use within our light. So let's get rid of this. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. So I'm now going to wire my rotary action directly to my light on. Now, as soon as I put there's a change in my in the number in the brightness value, it's going to turn the light on and it's going to set the brightness. Now at the minute it's going to set it to five. Now we're going to set it, we want to set that to the payload. So we're going to put in squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, payload, squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket. Now, notice, if I hit format JSON now, it's going to come up with an error. It's going to come up with bad string. 
you need to ignore that and press done anyway. If we go back in, it'll be in a single line. It doesn't like it, it thinks there's a problem with it. Because it doesn't see payload as a number, but go with it for now. We press deploy. So we've got our light on. I've left my message payload debug here, so we should see the brightness change. So if I wind this down, we're down at 94, 77, and we can see the light is nice and dim. And in theory, if we wind that right up, that's gone really bright, up to 246. So we know that that's working. However, if I click on, or off, click it once, and I turn my dial, that's going to change the brightness and therefore turn the light on. Now, I don't really want that. I don't want to be able to, I want to be able to click on. I want positive action to turn it on and off. So we can wind that into this, this action here. We're still going to use this rotary, it's not rotary action. I'm going to change that to rotary brightness because that's what it's doing. I'm going to move rotary brightness up here. So the next thing we want to do is to check the light, the rotary brightness value. So I'm going to take this current state node and paste it here. I'm going to change this to rotary, choose rotary one brightness. Now I'm not going to be looking if the state is on or off. I need to be looking for a, a value. So if it's greater than zero, then we're going to pass the light on. Now I'm going to remove this one and wire it to here. So we always check to see what the current state of the rotary dial is before turning the light on. Now I'm going to actually move the rotary brightness down here and I'm going to copy this bedroom light state because if the bedroom light state is off I don't want to, to send, turn it on all of a sudden. So if the rotary brightness changes and the light state is on, so this is if it's on, so if it's true, we're going to check the brightness and turn the light on. Seems to make sense. I'm deploy. So we're starting with the light off. I can click it and it should turn on to its current status, which is 24, which is quite low. So I can turn that up. So that's gone nice and high. So we're now at 236, 246. I can click it off. Now if I turn it down, so we're now at six, I can see is the value here. However, we haven't turned it on until we click it. Now it should turn on nice and dim at six. Fantastic. So that is exactly what I wanted to achieve. So we can remember, we've still got these other switch points here, like a double click or a triple click. So we can wire those up to other things. It could wire it up to a lamp. We could wire it up to a, a different plug, a, a different light. We could even have that click change the light that we're then controlling rotary if we really thought about it. Now this rotary dial sits on my fridge and controls the worktop lighting, which I think is really cool. So we're all done. I hope you found that useful. If you have and you've taken something from this video, please give this video a like. If you'd like to see more from me, I've got plenty more to come. Please subscribe and you'll make sure you don't miss out on any new ones. I hope that today has shown you not just these particular remotes, but there's loads and loads of other remotes out there. There's loads of other buttons or features or all sorts of things. But I hope that you've learned something in the way that Node-RED can operate and maybe given you a few ideas about stuff that you've already got. Maybe it might give you an idea to go out to Ikea and buy these particular remotes. I'm totally not affiliated, I just like them. So anyway, I've been Simon from HomeSite. Thank you very much and see you next time. <laughs>